bird just came behind me to visit me. Little birdie, little songbird. So beautiful. Listen to that. drink after I've smoked a joint of the first drink of kombucha. I really enjoy that. I hang out with a lot of sociopaths or people that cross my paths and I don't get to talk about like what I enjoy quite often because they don't care what I enjoy. Uh, they don't care much about me. And that's okay. You know, except what I can do for them because they just seem to have this poverty about them. You know, they've had a hard time trying to build a basis for the whole development of their mind, their home, like what we have to live in the rest of our life. And I'd rather, you know, have a little bit of low self-esteem or poor self-image, quite frankly. I'm learning to live with it. Um, I think a certain amount of poverty, obviously I'm not abjectly poor, um, in a very rank-oriented world, no matter where you live, um, is going to confer, if you're a sensitive person, I think a little bit of humiliation upon you. A little bit of shame, um, but humility as well. And so you, you watch a lot of people kind of take too much and dismiss too much and just not really pay attention to their environment. And, you know, they're not mean people, but uh, part of the definition of mean is just rough, rough around the edges. And uh, I really value and I respect the value, you know, that they have in what they've done in life. And it's an odd sort of irony, I suppose. I think of myself as rather a bit luckier than they are. But I don't delude myself in thinking that I'm the luckiest person, luckiest shit that ever lived. Um, but I would probably smile with inner satisfaction if somebody called me that. You know, I'd like to think I'm a lucky shit. Uh, I think there are lots of lucky people in the world. I think you're pretty lucky if you don't have to work. Some people might say, well, you know, you'll see. You'll see one day. <laughs> and people have been saying that my whole life. You know, I said you can't. They can't live your life on poetry. Well, I do, and uh, I don't. I don't run around bragging on it. But that's basically what it took, right, to speak the language that benefited me, a language of life that benefits me. And I don't, just like my YouTube channel, I don't go around trying to make myself look like a, a big person, like a rich person. You know, I walk tall. I have my moments, but uh, I don't walk around feeling like a huge reason to fucking walk around like I have like some sort of foot-long cock or anything. I feel daily humbled uh, by, and not just by the fact that people live different or more affluent lives in many respects, perhaps more more responsibilities, perhaps they're trying their skills at parenting and managing jobs and lots of other responsibilities group psychology and the like but I dare say their lives may not be as extraordinarily difficult as I might think they are in so much as they in their life as it with my own confers a certain amount of reward upon what they what they do if nothing else they've got something to do um I think it's quite extraordinary that the strength that people exhibit um uh, I've I've had pretty extensive experience looking at um, the inner workings of families around me of different demographics I've never found a perfectly functioning family, I've never found a family that doesn't have some skeletons buried in the closet, literally buried in, in the fabric of their family mind, because the family has a mind, and you have a mind, and you try to distinguish your mind, obviously, from your family minds depending on the family that you have and people get geographically farther away quite often in order to do that because their minds are so deeply woven with that of their family and then they tend to recapitulate the things that they really didn't and never do, never will have the power to really object to because it just comes across in the training in other words, whatever was said in the house it always attends behavior and look very carefully at what someone just like in society, what you can talk about and what you can't talk about in the homes around you 
There's so much shit that people do not talk about. And believe me, or not believe me or not, in my family, I know exactly what that's like to not... I'm not accusing someone of having a family that doesn't talk about certain things. I, I don't know a family that doesn't, including mine. It's, but it's, it's not tolerable. I've never understood... Let me please, let me reiterate this. I've never understood any rational, reasonal, medical, spiritual, biological, or psychological necessity to sacrifice our ability to communicate for any reason, for any advantage in civilization. There's no basis for that. That's pure trauma. That's pure waste. It's pure pollution. It's poison. That's all it is. And if, if our lives require us to uh, what's that when a celebrity uh, does a sponsors a, a product endorse right there's no need for us to endorse that right why, why would we need to do that but we do learn to endorse it it just seems to be part of learning how to live in any world even mine to endorse blood, po endorse blood po poisoning. And I, I risk that greatly in the level of courtesy and, uh, that I extend to people around me. You know, maybe I, I could tell them off more. And, you know, and part of that comes from a long experience of dealing with narcissists and, you know, delusional religious people and, and so forth, including many atheists, atheists that I've known. I, uh, I only have so much energy in the world and while it may frustrate me to allow people to um, trespass upon the courtesy that I have shown them, um, and uh, someone who understands full well that they probably don't have a choice in that, um, it, uh, it does offer one a front-of-the-class view of something that's never put into a textbook, which is, how are people actually behaving? We don't really have good literature on that. How people behave everywhere. How they're actually behaving. Um, whether you call it psychopathy or just, you know, a combination of serious narcissistic personality disorders. An unfortunate constellation of them, let's say. Um, not the only thing about people. No, I'm not saying that's all people demonstrate. But... A very little bit is enough to eclipse all of their other more pleasant attributes. And that should be sickening to all of us. Not because people are bad, but because there's so much good that we're missing out on. Because there's too much violence in how people are taught to behave and communicate. And when I talk about violence and communication, one has to include not just things that are said that are violent, but an ambivalence, things that are not said things that are not included in what is said, included in one's consideration or the consideration of the society you've been trained to observe as though you are serving, though equivalent, your own basic needs. And this is how cults function, right? They dis dis disturb and disrupt the needs of a person and their parents and then trains the brain to equate serving what is left of their sense of their needs with serving the needs of a wider group that has a lot at stake in terms of its persistence in disturbing and disrupting the needs of families and children. see that little birdie again. But there's lots of sounds of birds around here. Fly just came to visit me. Fly medicine is very much about, you know, we talk about the fly on the wall, seeing, seeing everything. <laughs> you know, in intricate detail. Seeing patterns and everything. It's very hard to deceive someone when they see like a fly. 
In fact, in order to fly, in order to move, swim, fly, all different types of locomotion and every beast of earth and, and land and, and, and water and sky um, involves seeing, involves a vision of a kind. And we have a choice. You know, I mean, I think one of the most axiomatic uh, praxis of consciousness is that we have a decision in how much we observe the intelligence of our whole mind and our whole life and its whole experience of everything that's called the world, which is man's demands upon man. That's what the world is, man's demands upon man. Demands. They may, not, they may not be the natural needs, they may be the needs that have been changed and altered, but a demand is placed, nonetheless. People can be, we place demands on the world, I'm probably accused of placing demands on the world because I'm on disability or welfare or whatever you call it, a worthless, shiftless bastard. You might say, well, that's placing demands. And where we see people placing demands, then we tend to, you know, tends to say a lot about how we envision the world and the demands the world places on people. And people often see the demands individuals might place, but they may not see the demands that the world places on them, which is expert about distributing uh, its demands and then distributing quite often what you think about what is placing demands upon you or who is placing demands upon you. Okay? In any sense, a sense that people have disease, maybe that places demands upon a society. The demands that it's placing are answered by what that disease is communicating to any sufficiently reasonable society which doesn't want to promote disease. Wants to answer the demand with learning about what the demand is saying. So there are certain totally acceptable demands it must be owned for man to place upon man. People need things from us. Children will need things from us. And we need things from other people. And uh, there are people like myself who go without getting a lot of my needs met all the time or whose needs have become fairly minimal and or um, having not been met or not met clearly socially. I don't think I could ever make the argument that my needs are being met socially. I mean, that's one of the easiest things I could say about myself. Um, I nonetheless compensate with uh, having a relationship with my environment and quite frequently throughout my life romantic literature mostly that written by myself a romantic orientation to life classical romantic orientation to life it's just in my blood I don't know if it's a mental illness or not but people aren't as entertaining as my own mind in nature There is that select company which I have known, um, which I would never, had never wished to have been deprived of. And one of those people is my mother. You know, of all the older people that I know, my mother is the coolest person that I know, and thankfully she's not terribly religious. You know, she, uh, I try her patience. <sighs> you imagine what she has to listen to. If you've watched any of my videos. My mom gave me a close acquaintance uh, with uh, mental illness. And my dad. You know, how people can really get by quite well. You know, and how it might feel for a child might, like myself to just see how much they must clearly be suffering um, and how they have lost any expectation of anybody noticing how much they're suffering. Imagine the voice stopped that effectively. But children, children see that voice. They get the short end of its stick. Right? So I got, I got a lot of the unmet needs of my parents and I one of the reasons I'm on disability is that I wanted to take the rest of my life to learn as much as I could about what that was saying I think that's a communication 
And I think that uh, it does illuminate a lot of the poisoning of communication that seems to go along with civilization quite unnecessarily. I don't think there's any moral, reasonable, or reasonable defense of that. And more people should study it. More people are every day are confronted by it. They may call it many different names. They may call it the, the demon Lord Sith. They may call it uh, just the way people are. Maybe the way the brain evolved. They may call it original sin. They may call it uh, just stupid, malicious, fill-in-the-blank uh, minority group of choice or white people, which, you know, I've had a run-in with white people today. White people have been trained to take what they need. They take what they need, and they've taught everyone else in the world to do the same. Just take. Just take, 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 take what you need. Of course, you've got to get out there. Take what you need. Or no, I didn't take anything. No. People on welfare, they take things. We don't take anything. We made our money all by ourselves, even though we can't make money. We don't rely upon nature. We don't rely upon other people. We don't want to know how we rely upon people. Oh, my God, how we rely upon one another. How we rely upon one another. Do we not? You know, don't we all have to do our part to keep up the charade of civilization? Isn't it really just an act? Isn't its entire power, its electrical fucking force, kept up with an act? With a certain amount of leisure de man? Isn't it? Isn't that really what we're complaining about here? If we could just frack into that and stop acting... Stop acting. Just be the animal that we are. An animal in whose best interest it is to observe certain basic rules. If it doesn't want to be a stupid fucking dead shit. That's all. And I think most people could figure that out quite well. Without being abused. Oh, we think we're so good at communicating the rules and how to live that those who don't seem to enjoy life so much can be attributed with a failure and not an adequate and honest expression of how society actually feels to people some of whom might be reasonably supposed to just not not be exhibiting the same fucking symptoms some of which are considered highly socially rewarding and profitable and many of which are not and people have long since given up trying to figure out who the fuck made decisions as to what would be what which is which and somewhere along the way, in childhood and growing up, I guess we give up fucking complaining about something we don't even know how to give words to, which is that a lot of the fucking word is, world is A, needlessly painless, and B, needlessly arbitrary. Right? And not according to you. It's made up. It's just made up shit. We're worshipping people's mental garbage. Ugh, gives me... Makes me tense just thinking about it. I'm gonna go untense. Thanks for putting up with me slash world for as long as you have.